Teaching five-year-old girls how to roast marshmallows can be a very dangerous enterprise. But worth it. John Leckletter, chairman, president, and CEO of Eli Lilly Pharmaceuticals, on May 14th, 09, claims we all agree on three things. Health insurance for all, improved level of service, and controlling costs. What he says is missing is innovation, claiming that freedom to innovate is all important. What he neglects to say is the bulk of research is done by the government. He neglects to say that the pharmaceutical companies spend more on advertising than they do on research. He complains that new approvals are down, but doesn't inform us that in large, they are changing the color of their product to use it for a brand new symptom. What most people want is not health insurance. What most people want is not-for-profit health care. The profit should be taken out of the equation. What the polls and the pundits don't seem to understand is single-payer is not government-run. I have single-payer comes under the old GI contract I signed back in 1974. And every year my doc and I discuss, argue, and work out a health care plan. Early on when I needed surgery, knowing I had a 50% chance of being the person that passed on a disease to my daughter that made undergoing anesthesia extremely dangerous and only two doctors having perfected a test to determine the presence or absence of this disease to Canadian doctors one of them was flown into Houston and tested me the government paid that's single-payer in action. Moving on. Former President Clinton, an envoy to Haiti? George H.W. Bush started the destabilization of that nation and backed the thugs who overthrew Aristide, who had been democratically elected over the pro-U.S. candidate. Clinton let loose the goons who have been terrorizing those people ever since. So, when I heard he's going to stabilize, I know we'll soon see more fear in their eyes. And, after an ultimatum, make them take the neoliberal route or else. It's not like what's good for the goose is good for their gander. Those of you who feel disappointed in the tenor because the president is ruling from the right of center must have voted for him from emotion. I'm sorry to inform, but you didn't parse his words, but voted on the notion that the tone of his orations were themselves an explanation of his political position. You've heard he led the law review at Harvard. Did you read what he was writing when he led? I know you know he studied constitutional law. But did you read his thesis or understand what all it said? He spent a year in some in organizing a community. But I have to ask why. It was not he lifelong aspiration. It was more like picking up a new skill on the fly. His cool and calm demeanor helped him get elected and in many little ways may be an asset. 
But you cannot head the USA without a backbone as close to steel as you can get. Unlike the Dems, Republicans do act in opposition. And they will fight him tooth and nail no matter his position. You think his first 100 days were rough? They wore kid gloves. Impeachment off the table? Bend over and get ready for Republicans in love. Speaking about impeachment, and Nancy's scramble as the speaker, making her very first words, it's off the table. I said it then, I'll say it again. She's fully aware, she's fully complicit in the war crimes committed and will be brought to justice if ever we are able. Obama's new general in Afghanistan ran hit squads in Iraq. Obama tried to push the banksters. They did better pushing back. The same with credit card abuse. Their interests have no limits. Just 45 days to tell you it's raised. They tell you why, but you can't challenge their intent. The Pentagon's swollen budget is getting a 4% raise. But not one dime for closing Gitmo where, by the way, the torture continues these days. We got an ex-VP on national TV acting like the symbol of his party. Like a jackass, he claims that somehow there are gains to be had by torturing an innocent party. We're being sold a bill of goods and... The man we elected to hold the line might talk like a dove, but when push comes to shove, rolls over and folds every single time. And it's not like he's lacking in public support. We want caps on compensation, limits to interest, mortgage cram downs, and single payer for the whole of the nation. No more blood for oil or profit. No more fear of maybe. No more lies from government spies. No more restricting our liberty. End the war on drugs. End the war on terror. End the war on critical thinking practiced by schools and courts and cops who have a green light to kill in error. The possibility received through blood and sweat and compromise is leaving the station and will soon disappear if we don't get on board and realize this is our country, not the banksters. The president is our employee. Don't let a bunch of criminal gangsters get away scot-free. And by acting in unity, there is nothing they can do to prevent us from becoming a nation dedicated to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness of, by, and for the people. And not just those demented few who by accident of birth or criminal enterprise have found themselves at the apex of the money game. It just blows me away how long we have let those sociopaths fester and spoil our birthright. Take it back. Do it right. And do it with a smile. Now, into the circle file.